trying to make the point that false claims, pseudoscience, are prevalent in the fitness industry. In bodybuilding, it's even worse. But with science, evidence, critical thinking, and hard work, you can vastly exceed your fitness goals. And I think you'll see that that is not an extraordinary claim. Oops. There we go. All right, so for today's workout, we're going to start with some cardio. I'm going to talk about fitness denial and the biggest excuse in fitness. Then I'm going to do the unthinkable and suggest that you take a supplement as we get into building muscle. And I'm going to give you the ultimate secret to building muscle. So it's going to be exciting. Buckle up. But first, a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. Before attempting any physical activity, please see a real doctor. And finally, um, don't take my word for anything I say. Be skeptical, do your research, let me know what you find out. Alright, this guy, Ani, the governor, when most people think about bodybuilders, this is what they think of. But not everyone that goes to the gym wants to look like this. And, um, this is not a talk about body shape. This is a talk about having fitness goals, meeting those goals, and lasting through them. Five years ago, I started on a journey that took me from the worst shape of my life to the best shape of my life. Today, pushing 50, I'm in the best shape of my life every day of my life. Um, I haven't been a lifelong athlete, as anyone that knew me in high school will gladly attest. And as you saw in the before picture a couple of slides ago, and I really never set foot in the gym until about five years ago. And I was quite intimidated by that, as I'm sure many of you are. A lot of people don't know what to do in the gym, as evidenced by all the comments that I had with people before I did this talk. So I used to think that guys like this went to the gym because they could. Through a combination of lucky genes, they had the right parents, or magic pills with terrible side effects. They just looked like that, and they would go to the gym because that's where people that looked like that went to. Um, but what I found was um, uh, that, is, uh, that is definitely not the case, and with hard work, you can do some pretty amazing things. One of the extraordinary things that um, I, always, I always assumed was not an extraordinary claim was that this relationship between fitness, working out, and health was a given, and we'd known that forever. But as I started talking to people about going to the gym, I kept meeting fitness deniers. But they would ask a great question, and the question was, does physical activity actually improve your health? And so like any good skeptic, I went off and I did some research. Well, the answer to this question is unequivocally yes. Oops. Do we just lose? It's unequivocally yes. But the funny thing is we haven't actually had evidence for that for very long. So in 1949, Dr. Jerry Morris um, decided to try and figure out why coronary incidents were going up rapidly in post-war war to London. So he did this by looking at workers on double-decker buses. What he found really quickly was that the sedentary drivers had a much higher coronary incident rate than the conductors who were up and down stairs all day long. Well, these two men of similar income, socioeconomic standing, in the same work environment, had one thing that really separated them, and that was the amount of physical activity that they did. Well, that's interesting. And he went off and replicated it with postal workers and found sedentary postal clerks, much higher rate of coronary incidents than their counterparts that walked the beat and delivered mail all day. So it's pretty clear that more strenuous activity is better for your health. But let's take this a little farther by addressing the biggest issues in fitness. I don't have enough time. Well, what if I told you that you could work out for less than 10 minutes a week and get the same benefits as six hours of the same kind of, of cardio workout you're probably already doing today. You would say that's an extraordinary claim. You would be correct to be skeptical. But let's run a little experiment. Let's take two groups. Group one does 90 to 120 minutes of moderate cardio three times a week. This can be cycling, swimming, uh, running, 
Whatever, whatever you like. Something that gets the heart pumping. Okay, total for the week, four and a half to six hours. Group two does 20 to 30 seconds, full out, hard as they can go. Rest for a couple of minutes, does that four to six times, repeats the whole thing three times a week. Total workout for the week, six to nine minutes. Okay, after a couple of weeks, as measured by time tests and muscle biopsies, these two groups have identical results in terms of endurance and capacity. And they've actually replicated this a lot of times with variance in how much time people are working out, how much time they're resting, but this is amazing science called high intensity interval training. And I have good news and bad news about it. The bad news is, even though you're only working out for a few minutes, you're going to hate every one of those minutes. Or you're probably not doing it right, because you're going to be out of breath. And before you can catch your breath, you're right back into it. You feel like you're going to die. It's really kind of a terrible feeling. But the good news is, you now have time to work out. All right, let's move on to talking about building muscle. Well, we are inundated with marketing around supplements. But we have a pretty good body of evidence now that says that most supplements um, really don't do anything for you. Uh, unless you have a deficiency or a special need. Well, building muscle is a special need, and I'm going to do the crazy thing of recommending uh, a supplement to tab attendees. Well, I'm going to talk about one supplement today, and that is the most popular supplement in bodybuilding for a reason, and that is protein. So it's worth saying that for most people with a balanced, dairy diet, you can have protein, or you wouldn't function. And you know, clearly you've all come today. That's a little bit self-selecting. If you didn't come today, you may not have had enough protein, so you can't get out of bed. But for all of you, you're getting enough protein. But we're not talking about just maintaining and being okay. We're talking about building muscle, really getting to another fitness level. When I first told my doctor that I was going to be taking protein supplements, his response to me was, well, it's not really so much a supplement as it is a dietary choice. Protein, it turns out, is food. And it's an inexpensive supplement. It usually comes in a powdered form, the most popular of which is whey protein. But you can get it derived from beef, from eggs. For my vegetarian and vegan friends, you can have soy or wheat. There's all kinds of options there. Um, but when I started examining supplements, I built a skeptical screening process. And so I'd like to walk you through protein through that screening process. So the first one is do no harm. And because a lot of supplements are unregulated, uh, we have to be careful about this. Now the most serious problems I hear, I hear cited about protein are kidney and heart disease and allergies. Well, digesting food is harder on your kidneys. Digesting more food is harder on your kidneys. So there's a dosage issue there, uh, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, and obviously, if you have kidney disease, you probably need to be careful. In terms of heart disease, the biggest issue isn't so much the protein as all the other things that come along with it in most of the food that we eat, things like sodium, fat, cholesterol. And so if you have a refined supplement that reduces or minimizes those, that's probably good. And the last one is allergies, and I mentioned there's a lot of variance in the types of protein that you can buy. So for most people, these are not serious risks. The second one is proven efficacy. And unlike almost every other supplement, the science on protein is pretty basic. Protein is a basic building block of muscle. You need it to build muscle. So that's not really the question. The question here is dosage. How much should you be taking? And we'll get to that. And the last one is experience. For me, when I started taking protein supplements, I experienced increased muscle mass. And the funny thing was it pushed a lot of other stuff out of my diet. Because it's food, I was actually less hungry, and I started eating a lot less crap. So inadvertently, it gave me a better diet. And I mean, I don't have infinite time and infinite money, so it's great to have all the evidence, but if I can't feel it and see it, I don't care. Might be placebo. I'm okay with that. No problem. Completely anecdotal. You need to take this third one in the spirit that it's intended. But that was also important for me. But let's talk about dosage for a second. The rule of thumb for bodybuilders for 50 years has been one gram of protein per pound of body weight every day. Now, it's really fascinating that those two things would align perfectly. 
especially because one is in metric and one is in imperial. And this is how we crash the Mars orbiter. Right. So it turns out that ratio is too good to be true, and the best evidence we have seems to say that it's above three quarters of a gram of protein per pound of body weight every day if you want to build muscle. Now that's the optimal level. So if you have more than that, it doesn't really seem to be helping you, and if you have much more, it could cause problems, as I mentioned before. But how much food is that? I really didn't have a good idea, so I used a combination of Google Food and mathematics to do a little analysis. Let's take two sample subjects. A woman who is about um, 125 pounds and about 100 grams of protein. A man uh, of about 175 pounds, this is me, needs about 140 grams of protein. How much food is that? Well, it turns out that's a crap load of food. Um, that is two dozen eggs or three and a half large chicken breasts or almost four pounds of tofu. And along with that food comes all kinds of things that you probably don't want to eat. The chicken, for example, 30 grams of fat and over 200 milligrams of sodium and cholesterol. The eggs have four grams of cholesterol. The protein is a lot less scary than the other things you're getting with the food. So if you take a refined supplement that reduces those and means you don't have to eat all day long, that's probably a good thing. So if you're working out, you're probably getting less protein than you need, and a protein supplement is not a bad idea. So, finally, I'm going to tell you the ultimate secret to building muscle. Now, every trainer that I've talked to told me, well, that's obvious. But I didn't know this, and I never heard it plain, put plainly, clearly. We are predisposed to avoid failure. If you ride a motorcycle, and you take that to the point of failure, you're going to have a road rash. If you take your relationship to the point of failure, that's going to end your murder-suicide. There are good reasons why we avoid failure. But there's a growing body of evidence that talks about the value of failure. Failure, it turns out, is, and the lessons you learn from failure are as important as success in catching prey on the savanna or businessmen succeeding in the marketplace. Um, failure means you either adapt or you get left behind. And this is also true for bodybuilding. Oops, there we go. Um, if you do an easy workout, you are not telling the body that they have to put on the extra capacity to deal with that work. It's only taking a workout to the point where it can't handle it that actually forces the body to build muscles. So I'll give you an example. If I decide I want to build my biceps and I do 10 bicep curls, and then I wait a minute and I do another 10, and then I wait a minute and I do another 10. Okay, I get the form perfect. I start adding weight until I fail. So I might do eight, six, and four. Now let me be clear, I suck, I have failed. But I come back a day or two later, and I might do 10, eight, and six. And a day or two later, I might do 10, 10, and 10. And at that point, I bump up the weight, and I start failing again. Because in building muscle, um, failure is success. It sounds like a self-help platitude, but it kind of works. And this is a good point to remind you that we aren't talking about looking like Schwarzenegger. We aren't talking about competing against the guy in the gym next to you. We're talking about you sucking a little bit less than you did yesterday. That is methodical self-improvement, and that is skeptical bodybuilding. So let's review what we've learned today. The first one is physical activity improves your health, but we haven't known that for very long. There's no such thing as not enough time, but you might not like the price you have to pay. You need more protein than you think, but not as much as most bodybuilders think. And finally, now that you know the ultimate secret to building muscle, I'd like you all to get out there and fail. I'd like to thank the James Randi Educational Foundation for letting me speak. Thank you all for your time and attention. <laughs> you mentioned protein coming from soy. 
Is there any research that indicates that uh, you should avoid soy protein because of phytoestrogen issues? And as a second question, if that would be answered quickly, is there any science or research that shows that sucralose is a bad additive for protein powders? Sorry, then what is bad for protein powders? Sucralose. Sucralose. I don't know what sucralose is. So I should start by saying I'm not a doctor. You should see a real doctor before you ask any of these questions. Um, I have um, I have trainers who are vegan, who um, only take soy protein. It seems to be okay. I mean, I haven't seen the evidence that says that there's a there's a real issue there. And the sucralose question, I really don't know how to answer. Uh, I know it's opinion only. Uh, so I'm asking from that point of view. During your research, did you look into CrossFit, which is probably what I've seen the biggest fitness craze at the moment. Sure. Bad. Thank you. Um, I've looked at CrossFit a little bit. Uh, it certainly benefits some people. It's a little bit cultish, but I know a number of people that do it. Um, I'm not an expert on CrossFit. Hey, yeah, in addition to uh, protein supplements, I've seen a lot of stuff about creatine supplements. Yeah. And, uh, it says it will build muscle because it says so right on the bottle, so it must be true. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, so everything says that in the bottle. Um, <laughs> um, I, I do take creatine. Um, it's one of those things that seems to not do harm and may do good, and a lot of bodybuilders take it, and I've tried it, and it seemed to have a benefit on me. I don't know. I haven't seen great evidence on creatine yet. Did you encounter much research involving going past failure, like forced reps, that kind of thing? Um, yeah, I mean, because I'm not 20 years old, uh, my biggest criteria is not to get injured. And I have no illusions that I'm going to look like Arnie one day. So, d despite what you see here. Um, so I'm not looking at getting to a really elite level of fitness, and so I haven't really seen any research around that, but uh, but uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about it later. One, one more question. Uh, thank you. Uh, what I've read is the protein needs, based upon your body size, are about 40 to 60 grams per day. The question I have is, what are the side effects of taking double to triple amount, what is believed to be the proper amount of protein per day? Well, the research that I've seen says, and again, the um, three quarters of a gram per pound of body weight every day seems to be the best evidence that I've seen so far. Um, it doesn't look like taking more helps you. And then at a certain point it's going to start to cause other issues like kidney disease. I'm not sure what that, what that level is. I have seen research on it. Um, it's out there. Um, but uh, you, you do need to be careful. And at a certain point, um, uh, you know, you, you need to do what's best for your body. I mean, the, uh, the real message that I want to send on that is you're probably not getting as much protein as you think you, you need when you're trying to build muscle. And this is something I see from a lot of uh, new people in the gym. Well, Jay, thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thanks for starting this off.